Devonian Earth. 400 million years ago. Tropical climate with oceans covering most of the surface. Vascular plants and arthropods were everywhere in land. Oceans were dominated by placoderms and sharks. At the bottom of the food chain, phylocarids continued to multiply and diversify. They were occupying the niche the trilobites were losing little by little. Their basic design came from the Hymenocarina. Hymenocarina were known recently for having a mandibula. And some of them like Urcacunia having two pairs of antennules like crustaceans. Phylocarids were different from the Hymenocarina by evolving different types of appendages. Specifically appendages from the rear position. Out of this group of phylocarids, the ancestor of all insects evolved. Genetic analysis places Archaeognatha and Columbola as the first two lineage that diverged out of Hexapoda. And Remipedia, a crustacean, as the closest relative to all insects. Columbola and Archaeognatha are present at late Devonian according to the fossil record and they still look about the same. Columbola is found in Chert, indicating that it died at an aquatic environment full of silicious skeletons. Chert only forms at depths that allow silicious skeletons to not get dissolved by carbonic acid in water. It is called the boundary of maximum saturation. Archaeognatha is found in sandstone. It indicates a high energy environment or in other words high energy waters. The oldest Remipedia fossil was found in Texas. It was part of a calcareous sediment layer from the Carboniferous period. There is no much difference between the fossil and the modern Remipedia. Strudiella devonica found in Belgium, is found in siltstone and it is confirmed that it belonged to a lake environment. All this information illustrates only one thing. An aquatic arthropod similar to Remipedia invaded the shoreline where calcareous sediments accumulate. They reduced their body length, lost one pair of antennules and evolved their ability to breathe air. With their well-developed three pairs of walking legs, they invaded the land, or at least the beach. Some of them moved back to the ocean, but later returned to land again with a different appearance. Others went far away from the beach. They went to rivers and lakes, where fresh water accumulates. This terrestrial insects or amphibian insects had special abilities. They were able to jump and and climb to high branches. As well as to glide and know how to land. They were probably trying to avoid other arthropods like myriapods and arachnids. As well as the early amphibians. Archaeognatha and Columbola became true terrestrial arthropods by completing their life cycles without the need of returning to water. But the ancestor of all flying insects belonged to the group of insects that retained their amphibian life cycle. From all flying insects. Ephemeroptera or mayflies, are the most primitive of all. They preserved the third caudal filament similar to the wingless insects Archaeognatha and Zygentoma. Ephemeropteran nymphs preserved a lot of traits from the Archaeognatha. The similarities are evident. Same type of leglets that divide into two. Ephemeroptera has a stage that makes them different than the other aquatic insects. When they emerge out of the water and out of their out skin, their new wings are translucent and full of little hairs that prevent routing. They fly out of the water to make their final molting. This final stage only lasts a couple of hours.
During the end of the Devonian, an Archaeognatha-like population of insects evolved and staged that resembled the last stages of Ephemeroptera. A mutation in this population modified their pleural tissue. This mutant insect became unreachable. Its diversification gave rise to all flying insects. At the Carboniferous period, four types of insects evolved. Ephemeroptera, three caudal filaments, exposed gills in the abdomen, and an extra stage before reproduction. Paleodictyoptera, beaked insects that preserved the prototoraxic wing. Paleoptera, dragonflies and damselfly ancestors. Capable of extend their labium on their nymph stage. Neoptera, ancestors of all insects that are capable of folding their wings. All of them had a trait that disappeared during time. A protothoraxic wing. According to the most recent phylogenetic analysis, the Ephemeroptera population divided into two. This second population is characterized by having two claws at the end of the legs. And that second population, divided into two, again, having from one side the Paleodictyopterans and on the other the common ancestor of the Paleopterans and Neopterans. The extinct Paleodictyopterans and Neopterans had the ability of folding their wings. But they evolved this ability independently. Another trait that they had in common was the beak. Paleodictyopteran beaks resemble Hemipterans proboscis. Carboniferous skies were dominated by Meganeura and Megascoptera. The floors and plant branches were filled with Proteothopterans. The ancestral form of cockroaches, termites, grasshoppers, and mantis. At the end of Carboniferous, two evolutionary events took place and changed everything. First, seed plants evolved and radiated. This helped plant reach places where they couldn't reach in the past. This also allowed insect to expand away to terrains not yet reached by them. And second, first holometabolans, insects with complete metamorphosis evolved. Avioxiella gallica has venation patterns that link it to beetles, wasps, flies and butterflies. Carboniferous is the really the age of insects, where representatives of modern insects coexisted with the extinct. All of them had first appeared here.